I would take you guys with me, of course. I meet a bunch of awesome YouTubers and meet a lot of you guys. <laughs> and I'm gonna go walk around the show, and of course, the most important part is show you guys some amazing animals. Pretty much anything you wanna find is gonna be at Tim Lake. So, what do you say? Let's go. popular in the US. I have a ball python and I love her to death. These guys are better pets than ball pythons. I've never had a house snake refuse a meal for me even in shed. Hi guys, I'm here at the Pangea Reptile booth. I show you guys their table pretty much every show because they have the most amazing geckos ever. So much variety, so it's always really fun to show you guys their animals, so let's take a look. This blotch is amazing. Here we have a beautiful female Sarah. Oh. Pretty. Yes. Look at this big girl. She's so cute. She's so big. Look at her rolls. <laughs> she even has neck rolls. Why are you so chunky? There's another Pangea gecko, a very red one. She would uncurl. She is a tri. Oh, she, oh, she Starting is. Starting to get the white coming in. Oh, Ooh. hi. <laughs> we need to get more reds. They, I know, I, I feel like they're downplayed now. I know, not many people have reds anymore. Look at this one. Gorgeous tricolor. I just love tricolors. Oh, and right beneath it, there's a beautiful Dalmatian, too. So I'm here with Matt, and he's gonna show us his new addition. Yeah, I had to buy something, right? Of so course. I got a couple of these guys. Green Over tree here. monitors, right? Yep. Gorgeous. Uh, yeah, no. Just getting ready to shut it a little bit. So I think we have a pair. So you're hoping they're a breeding pair? It looks like it. Will be a breeding pair? Yep. I saw you guys were working with, we filmed the Aki monitors last time yep, too. Yeah, we got Aki's and now these guys. I've always wanted them, so now I got some. Where are you trying to go? He's looking for an opportunity to jump. jump. Yeah. When you named your business Pangea Reptile, did you yeah. have just geckos? Yeah, it was just geckos in the basement of my house. And you're like, well, I might have more than just geckos someday, yeah. so reptile. Yep, exactly. <laughs> it worked out, right? It worked out. Well, one of the bigger little ackies. I've got a bunch of these on the table right now. Great little pets, um, very smart, intelligent, and fun to work with. So you mentioned last time that you were developing a diet for them. How's that going? Yeah. It's going really well. Ooh. So I still don't have a date on when that's coming out. <laughs> that's exciting uh, though. We will have that. Yeah, it's quick. Will it be mostly just for Aki monitors? No, it's for all carnivores. <gasps> wow, a carnivore diet? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's exciting. Sure. You can get them species, to eat so. it without oh, yeah. the insect drive of catching something? Right. Wow, that These is really These guys go right cool. for it. That's so. going to be like game changing. Uh, I think so. Yeah. This is a different bloodline that I have that has a little more different pattern. On the side it has less scales. Yeah, it does. They're so underrated. Yeah, and they have the really big scales on their sides. They look like like cobblestone or something. So these are Symmetricus, you said? Symmetricus, yeah. Their diagnostic feature is they have tubercles, so little bumps on the back of their necks. So they're the only species that has that in the Eardactylodes clade. Do you know why their common name is chameleon gecko? Actually, I have put no your idea. finger out. So they grab it like that, and they're Ooh. just little, like, chameleons. Oh, that's why they say that? Yeah. I have they, one of like, these, but I... Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I bet in the wild they just grab a branch and just hold on to it and lay there. All day. But they're actually, you know, probably endangered because sclerophyll forest has been reduced by like 95%. I've heard that so. if you go out there it's just so sad yeah. because they're just tearing it down. I went there a couple years ago. You see all these rolling hills that used to be heavily forested. And only the ravines are forested still because like the water trickles through there. That is so, so. sad. 
big. They also have Tokay geckos at Pangea and they're all captive bred. So you can tell that they're really healthy. Look at this Amiya! It's so cool coming over here and looking at their stuff because they have so many in one place and it's like every color and every pattern of crested gecko is so cool. Well Matt, we saw a lot of cool geckos today. I love them as always. What's the next show you're going to be at? Um, yeah, we're going to be at St. Louis and ARBC in November. Well hey, guess what? I'm going to be there too. She's going to be there too. <laughs> check us out. PangeaReptile.com PangeaReptile.com Look at this gorgeous palmetto corn snake I'm holding at Travelers Palmetto corn snake is one of my absolute favorites, and this one's so pretty. Is this one of your breeders? Uh, yes. Does it have a name or anything? No. Can I ask my followers to give it a name? You, you may name it if you'd like. I Go can name for it. it. Oh, how about, um, oh man, I'm so bad at naming. <laughs> <laughs> how about you guys leave a comment on what we should name this beautiful corn snake? Because <laughs> I can't decide. It's so pretty. Distinct species. Yeah. They stay a little bit smaller, darker, obvious. What do you sell this one for? Uh, they're five thousand a pair. So it's from some that I got in from Europe. It's like much more orange than the other one. It's crazy how they're so like how they can vary so much. That's why I like them so much. Beautiful. So pretty. Chase is here and he bought a bunch of stuff and he's gonna show us stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh, these little newts. What species are these? Cute. So these are Lysitrion vulgaris. These are Neorachillus crocatus. What? I love their spots. Yeah, isn't that cool? Cute. Oh, and there's a frog here. <laughs> it's just a regular wax monkey, not a giant wax monkey. Oh, okay. Phylum Medusa savage. What's your favorite tree frog? Where's the Ohio grass frogs? The Amazon French leaf frog. <laughs> ah, my favorite too. These are Tris carnifats. So oh, their tails are amazing. Aren't they? Their little eyes. So cool how you were able to get these and now you can start working with them. Exactly. Now we can start bringing these out. Very, very, very rare. Regular carnifex. How big do these get? Species? Six or seven inches. Oh. So these are all babies. Yeah. You tiny ones. Oh, oh these are the pygmaeus. Yeah. Wait, where are they? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see it. He was blending in. They're basically a tiny marmoratus. Yep. Which is exciting. Well, it's the end of the first day, almost. I'm about to go down to the auction. It starts in like 30 minutes. It all goes to US Arc and benefits us as reptile keepers. So yeah, see you at the auction. I don't know why 
I didn't think of this. This is the 20th anniversary for NARBC. 20th anniversary! This is a very special one! Through NARBC shows and viewers are watching, over $2.5 million. I mean, obviously Bob and I put a lot of work into the shows, but vendors are what makes the shows. What makes Hi the guys! Shows. Oh. Hi. So what? Wow. So old to the bald man with the glasses. Female. We're gonna zoom in Square on everybody. Starts it out at a hundred bucks. Once. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. Hot show! What was that? So we gather on the Saturday night of every NARBC show for an auction with items donated from the vendors, promoters, and attendees of the show. Most of the time, all of the proceeds go to US ARC, but sometimes a portion will go to members of our community that are in need. Like at this one, some of the proceeds were donated to Tell Hicks. The money that goes to US ARC benefits us as animal keepers because the mission of US ARC is to preserve our rights to keep reptiles and exotic pets. Almost daily, there are bills being introduced in different states trying to ban the ownership of many different species species of reptiles and exotics, often even commonly owned ones like ball pythons and lizard species like leopard geckos and tegus. We all should do what we can to spread the word about the importance of keeping animals in captivity for conservation purposes and because, well, if we can give them what they need and take good care of them while they live in our homes with us, we believe that we should be able to. I am a US ARC member and proud. So visit the next NARBC auction at the next show. And by the way, the next up is in St. Louis, Missouri, November 13th and 14th. Or go to usarc.org to see how you can become a member, get some cool merch, and support our rights to keep reptiles. Plus, these auctions are always super hilarious. Anyways, back to the video. Hang on, hang on. It was a male, right, Dave? It's a female. It's a female? That's a female. Seven right there, seven right there, eight hundred right there, eight hundred right there, nine hundred right, right here, one thousand right there, eleven hundred. down to the show yet because when I woke up I had absolutely zero executive functioning in my body so I had to rest while my medicine kicked in so I could get up and actually function and not be falling asleep and out of it. I don't know if I've talked about this yet but I was actually recently diagnosed with ADHD and I am also on the autism spectrum. Actually I think that was about like a year ago now but I finally have medication for my ADHD. So with that being said hopefully I can actually um, start operating at 100% instead of like 50 most of the time but that just goes to show like and hopefully this can inspire some of you guys if you're able to do all of the things that you've done operating at not your full potential then imagine all the things you can do while you are able to operate at full potential it only gets better from here Hopefully this will allow me to plan things better and organize better so that way I can have a more steady upload schedule and post videos more regularly. But yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Anyways, let's go to the show. See you guys there. Hi you guys, I am standing in front of the Dragonwood Conservancy. You can usually see them at most Tinley Parks and they focus on the conservation of crocodilians. The things that they do for these animals is absolutely amazing. Because of COVID, they've had a lot of struggles getting funded so if you guys want to check them out at a future show, you can also check them out on Facebook. We also have an Instagram page, but uh, the Facebook is the primary. We work with quite a few of the big snakes. We work with many turtles and tortoises, including some critically endangered ones. We work with a lot of the lizards, the cyclera of the Caribbean dragons, as they're called. This is the Australian olive python, about a five-year-old. She's gorgeous. And then here we have a Morlitz crocodile. This is a uh, smooth-fronted caiman. Oh, beautiful. So everything here was hatched at our facility. Do you have a name? Some do, some don't, but that one doesn't at the moment. Could I have my followers suggest names? Absolutely. Well, if you guys would like to help name this beautiful one, comment some suggestions, and you can also message them on their Facebook and send a donation with a name suggestion. Maybe they'll pick it. <laughs> this is Lydia. She watches my videos, and she just got her first crusted gecko. Can we see him? Ooh, he's a pretty one. So he's 
like a little yellow quad stripe Dalmatian. He is gorgeous. I'm here at Reptex table and they have the only Abronia here, I think. And they're captive bred, so that's awesome. I know a lot of you guys ask about where you can find Abronia, so I'm going to link them in the description because I think it's very important to try and find uh, healthy captive bred animals when you're considering these guys. And theirs are all very healthy and gorgeous. Look at this little one. Is it a calico or? Oh, his color, he's got like black. I stuff. know, isn't it cool? I've never seen a Grimania like that. Wow. He still looks pretty green too. Steven, why does sometimes Grimania do that with the blue when they're in captivity? They turn blue? The, the jury's still kind of out on that. It's thought to be dietary, uh, oh. lack of uh, beta carotenoid supplementation in captivity. So for that, we, we do use the uh, Rukashi beta carotenoid supplement as well as bee pollen to supplement oh. our crickets. You definitely tell the difference in their coloration when yeah. they're actually supplemented properly. You know, that is why in captivity they'll lose that lime green that they have in the wild. That's, that's so beautiful. I do remember hearing and be like, okay, these ones are not for sale. We're just gonna <laughs> keep these under the table. This one's huge. Okay. This is probably the nicest looking one color wise. Ooh. So do you guys feed yours mostly crickets or do you give them a pretty varied diet? Yeah, mostly crickets. Mostly Some crickets. more. It really, they eat infrequently twice a week kind of during like the spring and summer. Yeah. in the winter. Yeah, you just need to get the parameters right, and really beyond that, they're they're a, a lower maintenance lizard. Yeah. It's kind of like leave them alone, but be very specific with how you're leaving them alone. Yeah. And then then they'll do well. We work with a, a good number of the Abronia species, but uh, so cool. uh, Lythra and Smith Eye are the two that we have the most of. that I produced. And the reason why I wanted to show off this one was because Orange Dream is a gene in ball pythons that really brings out that orange. He's that just great. gets more and more orange with every shed. But the reason why I wanted to pick out Inchi was to show you guys that when you add Inchi to Pied, you get really crazy patterns on the snake. I see that. And you get really low white Pieds. And it really makes for a totally awesome yeah. snake. Okay. And look at that, that looks like a little face right there. Yeah, it does. And he's talking to that guy who doesn't have any eyes or ears, so he's not listening. Little... There's his mouth, there's his eye. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it just, Inchi makes really crazy patterns when it comes to Pied. I love putting Inchi into Pied, but then when you add a really cool gene like Orange Dream and make Orange Dream Inchi Pieds, you get a really, really cool pied morph. Every time I see you at a show, I learn something new about ball pythons, so thank well, you. <laughs> eventually, you will know everything. Do you about know ball everything? <laughs> <laughs> 
You said this is named Miss Piggy? This is Miss Piggy, yeah. She got her tail slammed as a baby and then it curled up like this for some reason. Oh, it's all wavy. I actually have a snake named Miss Piggy too. It's an albino garter snake. Oh, no way. Is she a piggy also? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, she's a little chubby. You she can fits see. her name? Yeah, we don't we don't talk about it though. She's sensitive. You wanna see something cool, super cool? Yeah. So this is the smallest locality of reticulated pythons. Wow. This one's eight months old. It's a Karampa Island locality. They're the smallest retics. I've never even heard of these. We're the only ones that bred them in captivity. That's amazing. There's only six adults left. They managed to get four of them together and we got a few clutches. Wow. We have one more gravid female right now. So we're trying to trying to get those. I mean, they would be so super cool pets because they get about as big as a big bull snake or yeah. something. Yeah, that'd be great for people who want retics but don't want to deal with the size that yep. they can be. And like their dad is smaller than this girl. Oh, wow. So it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So that's a Madu, but you see the difference. Yeah. I mean, you can see Ooh. it. A lot of retic guys say they can't see it, but there it is. Really? Yeah, that's a Madu, that's a Karampa. Yeah, there's definitely a difference in color and pattern. Yep, they've not been uh, named yet. They're most likely at least a new subspecies, if not full species. Thank you for showing us these, Garrett. Thank you. And you can follow Reach Out Reptiles on YouTube and Instagram and all that stuff, right? But not on TikTok. Not TikTok, so you should also get a TikTok. You and Dave need to make TikTok. Me and Dave are both old. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> so I'm here with Tyler Loki, Maddie Smith, Mason Barnes, and we're all looking at this beautiful Chihua Crested Hybrid. That is so pretty. Probably the most red <laughs> thing I've ever seen, gecko-wise. How many of these have you produced? I produced three of them. I took an entire breeding season. This was a bicolor red female crested and uh, just a plain pink and green Pine Island Chihua, nothing too fancy. And then I also had a tiger stripe crested gecko oh. in the mix. Most of my other eggs were um, were infertile. So then I had a couple that would make it almost to the end, like about a week or two before hatching and then unfortunately died. It's one of those things when you're working with a hybrid species. Yeah. Uh, what's the incubation period on the eggs? Is it a combination of like Chihua and Crested? Or? Yeah, really? combo. But I always try to leave mine in as long as possible. I try to do as cool a temperature. Thank yeah, that's you. insane. I wish you guys could see them fully fired, but... Oh my gosh! Are you serious yeah. right now? <laughs> I think you're going to hang out in your building. Who could have cried? That is so sweet. I'm gonna put my business card in your bag, okay? You're a friend of my money and yours. Okay, get the Reptile Expos on TikTok, so go check that out.